Uh, boy. Excuse me. <sighs> Let's just record and we'll see what happens. I think I'm a little rattled. My husband just made a cup of tea and left the bag in and left the room. Well, how do you start a podcast? How? How do you start a podcast without sounding like an absolute idiot? Oh, let's get comfortable. Okay. Hi, my name's Ailey. I live in Inverness in the Scottish Highlands with my husband, Kieran, and my puppy, Odin. He's a golden retriever collie cross and we love him so much. He's so sweet. I am a yarn dyer. That's my main business now. I started about six months ago and that business is called Kelpie Knits, which is why this is the Kelpie Knits podcast. Very imaginative. I don't really know what I'm doing. I have never really filmed myself before. I never really take photos of myself, to be completely honest. I don't like myself on camera. I'm dreading editing this back and looking at myself and hearing myself speak. I don't know if that gives anyone else the fear, but I hate it so, so, so much. So this is very new to me, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really, really excited and I'm happy to get to talk to people. Even though you aren't people, you're a little dot at the moment. But hopefully someone is watching this. I decided to start the podcast to talk a bit about what I love to do, which is knit. I love knitting and I've been knitting for quite a long time now. I just want to create my own little space on the internet to talk about knitting with people and I hope that other people want to do that too. Basically, this podcast is going to be fairly simple to follow. I've decided I'm going to aim for a year of podcasting once every two weeks. So you can expect a new episode from me once a fortnight. I haven't decided on an upload day yet. I will probably. I haven't gotten that far. I'm going to break it down into three or four different sections and you can skip ahead to whatever you want to watch. I know that everyone likes something a little bit different from their knitting podcasts and that's okay. I'm going to try and make sure that I have timestamps somewhere. You can just skip to whatever you want to see, that's fine. First will be works in progress. That's exactly what it sounds like. Works in progress, what I'm knitting, what I'm working on, sharing with you what I think about the patterns, how I've been getting on, how I find the project itself, what trips me up, any mistakes I make, I'm gonna be quite transparent about that. Whenever I've watched podcasts, I don't like seeing perfect projects because mine never look that way. I'm intermediate knitter, I'm not an expert. You know, I have a good understanding of the basics and I kind of know my way around, I know what I'm doing, but I wanna try and push myself and that's part of what this is. Second section will be finished objects. Just the things that I've finished in the past two weeks. I do want to give a disclaimer here that I am not a particularly fast knitter. And on top of that, I run my own business. I don't have anyone else working for me, it's just myself. I don't have a huge amount of time, so we'll just see how, how it goes. I'm gonna really, really try and not force myself to finish things just for you. I don't think that's very fair on you or on me if I'm just churning things out for the sake of it. And then, you know, if you feel bad for being a slow knitter, which you shouldn't, then we can be friends. The other thing I want to do with this podcast, which I think might be a little bit different, is I really want to focus on stash busting. Everyone loves their stash. I love mine. I have a stash that's far too big upstairs and I have so much lovely yarn, but it's expensive. It's expensive to buy yarn for projects or even just yarn speculatively. It's expensive to go out and buy single skeins of, of beautiful yarn. And I realise I'm saying this as a yarn dyer, which probably isn't the best thing to do, but I get quite intimidated when I see other people's stashes. You know, mine doesn't necessarily look like that or the projects that I make, they're not always made with hand dyed yarn. So I feel like I have to keep up and make beautiful projects and there's no real need for it. What I've decided to do for 2020 is to try and have a no spend year in terms of yarn. I want to try and get through the year and buy no yarn, but I already have some exceptions to this. So we're already a bit iffy, or not iffy. There are exceptions to this rule. The first rule I've given myself is that presents are always okay. So if I get a gift of yarn, I'm not going to say no, sorry can't have that, that would just be ridiculous. Gifts are fine. The second is that if I need yarn to finish a project that I'm already in the middle of, then I'm allowed to do that. I think that's reasonable because there are some bits of yarn up there that I, I might need a bit more of to finish a certain project. So I'm gonna allow myself the budget to buy yarn to finish projects. Number three, I have been really interested in the Biff Sugar Yarns Yarn Club. I just got my first installment of it this morning. It's so beautiful. She's one of my favorite dyers. 
think her name is Alison. If that's not your name, Alison, I'm really, really sorry. Her yarn's beautiful. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna allow myself just her yarn club, one sock set a month, and that's my lot. To go along with all of this, I also want to run a knit along, or a crochet along, or make along, or whatever it is that you prefer doing. I'm a knitter, I crochet's never really worked for me, although I do want to try and make a granny square blanket, but I'm not even gonna talk about that right now. But I'm gonna be running the Kelpie Cal 2020. And to join in with this, it's really very simple, it's an easy one. All you need to do is knit projects using stashed yarn. So you're not allowed to buy new yarn for these at all, none whatsoever. You need to use yarn that's in your stash. I'm gonna be doing this too, by the way. This isn't just for other people to do. I'm gonna be doing this. Trying to make things with yarn that you already have. So it might mean marling two different strands of yarn together or having scrappy projects to work on. You get a lot more creative when you're limited in what you have around you, so I think the projects that come from this could be really, really exciting. It's gonna be running all year, right up until December 31st, 2020, which feels really far away. It's just a chance for you to join me on my stash busting journey. You can try and find projects that use the yarn that you bought six years ago at a craft fair that you felt too afraid to use. Now's the time. If you want to practice a technique in a project like brioche or cabling or color work, if there's something you've been afraid to do so far, this is a brilliant chance for you to do that. Just use the yarn from your stash and give it a go. You don't know how it's going to turn out, it could be absolutely beautiful. This is the time for your dodgy projects where you're trying out a new skill, or if you just want to practice sewing up sweaters, then it could be hodgepodge and it could look, it could look horrendous, but it's something to be proud of. And it's something that's from your stash that you haven't had to shell out for. I've opened a Ravelry group. It's called the Kelpie Knits Podcast. I'm going to be adding to there as we go, but that's going to be the main hub for knit along entries. I have yet to work out exactly how Ravelry groups work, but I will get there. I promise I'm going to be working hard. At the moment, there's just a topic with some show notes for this episode. That's already up there. So yeah, if you're interested in entering the knit along, it's really very simple. You just need to submit a photo of your finished project using your stash to yarn. Try and take a photo of the yarn beforehand if you can. Tell us a bit about when you got it, how long you've had it, and then a photo of your finished project. You can submit as many projects to this as you like. You have plenty of time. If you want to tackle something big like a blanket, this is the perfect opportunity because you have so long to do it. I'm gonna be giving out prizes monthly since it's such a long time, once a month, I'm going to be giving away one of my yarn club sock sets from Kelpie Knits. They're exclusive colorways, they're only available for that month and then they're completely gone. And for the whole year they are based on songs by Scottish artists and Scottish bands. I'll try and... I don't know where it's going to be, I don't, I don't know where I am. Maybe here? Maybe? Maybe the whole screen? January was based on Hold Me While You Wait by Lewis Capaldi and it was gorgeous and it was so much fun to make. February, next month's colourway, is based on I Don't Want a Lover by the band Texas. As prizes for the knit along, you'll get an exclusive Yarn Club sock set. Hopefully we can add to that as we go. If you're a creator, if you're a small business, and you make anything related to knitting, crochet, fibre, please get in touch with me. I would love to feature your work here and give it away as a prize on the podcast. I'll try and have some kind of an email address pop up on the screen that you can get in touch with me at if you're interested in donating a prize for the knit along. <sighs> okay, I feel like the pressure's off a little bit. I hate introductions. I hate it with people. I feel like it's always really awkward getting into a conversation and getting into a chat. Now is works in progress. Work in progress number one is, it's a little bit embarrassing. It, are currently on the 13th of January and I still haven't finished my advent project. I started on the 1st of December and it's still going. Before I get into any of my experience, I'm making the Adventuresome Wrap by Amber O'Brien. I'm going to try and have some kind of information somewhere so that you can find that pattern. But I should say just now, any patterns that I talk about, anything I mention, I'm going to put in the show notes on the Ravelry group. If you like, you could have this podcast playing in one window, open up the Ravelry group in another, and you have all the links to everything that I've talked about already. It's all there. Yeah, I'm making myself an advent wrap. And it was supposed to be finished by the end of December, but there's something about the run-up to Christmas that just means that time, it doesn't stand still, it just rushes away. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but this 
is my advent wrap so far. So it's all of these absolutely beautiful colours. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, why isn't it finished? It's so gorgeous. Like I said, this is an advent project and I treated myself to my first ever yarn advent calendar last year. I've never had one before. I got mine from Needle and Fred. She's on Etsy and everything that she does is amazing. All of her yarn is so fun and all of the names are wonderful. And she had one left and I managed to snap it up and I'm so glad that I did. All of the colours are phenomenal. This gold here is so stunning. And even the solids, there's this little bit of variegation in them that makes them so interesting to work with. But this one in particular absolutely gorgeous. It's actually, it's quite a challenging pattern to work. I've heard from a couple of people that they found it really easy and it's a pattern that you can sit and watch TV with. I haven't had that experience at all. I had to concentrate really quite hard while I was working on this. The lace design, although it's quite subtle, to me it required a lot of concentration and counting and making sure that things were going well. There's one section where you increase and turn one stitch into seven, six or seven, to create this little fan effect. And that was really, really difficult for me. There were several sections I had to take back almost completely. That, that got really frustrating. I don't know if I was maybe just distracted, but I found I was making lots of mistakes. So I felt I had to take it back. So that might have been a factor in the reason it's sat here for so long. Although the effect is lovely. I think the bit I like the most is the barrier between the colours, this little wave effect where you have the little spots of colour. I think that's really, really lovely and it is very striking and that was actually what attracted me to the pattern first. I did decide when I got my advent calendar that I wouldn't look ahead and I would add the colours as I opened them and as I went. Usually if I can make a colour gradient, I will. And I'm really glad that I didn't. It's so unique and special and different from what I would normally make. I don't really know when this will be finished. I've just finished another project, which I'll show you later on. I think I should probably finish this one first before I move on to anything else, since it is an advent project. I think the longer it languishes beside my chair, the worse I'm going to feel about it. So I should really just get it get it done and then I can enjoy it and I can wear it and I'm really looking forward to seeing it completely finished. I'm very happy with it, I just need to get it done. So that is my adventure sim wrap. Work in progress number two. I've already had a bit of a mishap. You can see, I'll get to what the pattern is and things in a minute. You can see that at the moment I have these circulars and these two stitch holders which when I took it downstairs to show you both popped open and dropped all the stitches that I was holding on there. Luckily there's only eight on each side so I was reasonably okay but a major panic. <laughs> I don't think I could do this again. It's been a real challenge and I was quite heartbroken when I saw that they had popped but I saved it and we're fine. Bear with me. Just talk amongst yourselves. This is my Embrace Octopus sweater. I haven't been referring to it as this. I've been referring to it as the Kraken. I have been for a very long time before I even started making it, it was the Kraken jumper. Um, I will hold it up so that you can see. I will try and put in some footage so that you can get a really good stable look. Um, I don't want to shake it around too much. Um, I'll show you the back quickly. I don't know why quickly, I can take my time, but that's the back. Uh, yeah, this this has been a real challenge. I've never made anything like this before. It's a colourwork sweater and it has a design of an octopus. Well, I'll put the picture up so you can see what I'm talking about. That makes it a lot easier. It has an octopus that goes over the front and the back of the sweater and down one sleeve. It just looked amazing. I saw the pictures years ago. Yeah, years ago. I just thought it was amazing. But I never thought I would be able to make anything like that. I was just kind of starting out and really believed that was beyond my skill level completely. That wasn't going to happen. And then my husband saw it and he completely fell in love with it. He's been very patient. There's a lot of people who have gotten a lot of knitted gifts before he got this one. If you're watching this, and you shouldn't be because we've talked about this, I don't want you watching it, it's too embarrassing. If you are, thank you for being so patient. I would say that this has actually been easier to work on than the wrap. 
there's something soothing to me about following a colour work chart. I think it feels like you're making a lot more progress as you go. I posted a photo on my Instagram, just do a cheeky plug here, on my Instagram and I highlighted each row so that I could see my progress uh, and then alternated the colour of highlighter I used every day so I could see how much I did and that's how I work and it's a bit strange now that I say it out loud. And I just found this a much more soothing knit than my wrap, which is strange because I think in terms of techniques this is probably harder, I think. I'll give you a look at the floats. Okay, so these are my floats. Now I do have some questions. If you have knit this jumper or anything like it, I would really like you to give me your input here. The design is just two colours and I'll try and have it up on the screen again here. This is what it's supposed to look like. Now, I know that you're not supposed to have a float that's longer than five stitches, but there are really long stretches of the jumper where there is no white. I've tried to make the floats really small so that I don't get the long baggy floats that are going to get caught in things as Kieran takes this on and off. But I feel like it looks really bizarre on the inside. I don't know if it's supposed to look like this or if I was supposed to use some other technique. It didn't tell me to do anything else in the pattern, so I don't really know. If you've made this, could you show me your floats? Is that weird? Could you, could you please show me your floats if you've made this jumper? Because I don't know if I've, if I've done too many or if it's supposed to look like that on the inside. I don't know, I need your help. That, that's why I'm here. I need help. It got put to one side initially because I had other Christmas knitting I had to do and then it got put to one side because I needed to buy more yarn for it, which has been fine. It just means I have to take my time. This is the yarn I've been using. It's Rico Essentials Alpaca Blend in Chunky Weight. Um, and one thing I will say is that I don't know if this was a good substitute. It condenses quite a lot. It's not a very lofty, chunky yarn. I don't know if that has affected the size. I feel like this is going to be quite snug on Kieran. And this is the large. There are only medium and large sizes and I feel like this is going to be quite snug on him. I don't know if my yarn choice has affected the sizing here. Again, if you've made this jumper and the yarn that you used worked really well, share it with me so that you know I could give this another go and try it again. I'm happy that I've given this a go because I always thought that something like this was way beyond me. I never thought that I would be able to knit a colourwork jumper and given that this is my first colourwork jumper, I think I've proven myself wrong, which feels quite nice. Kieran loves it. He thinks it's really cool. I'm currently just underneath the sleeves. I'm about to separate. Is it separate for the sleeves? I don't think it is. No, I think I need to start the sleeve at the cuff and then it gets joined on here. I can't I wouldn't really mind making another one. It's been quite good fun. I would recommend it if you want to try more colour work, even if you're afraid. Work in progress number three is a pair of really bog standard socks. I haven't gotten very far. They were um, that I started for going on a trip to Glasgow, so I want something portable, and this is as far as I've got. So I have my cuff, a little bit of leg. These are going to be short socks, so there's really very minimal amounts of leg happening there. I've turned the heel and now I'm working on the gusset just here. This is made with one of my colourways. It's my Mermaid Days colourway. I'm going to show you a little bit of the colour there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see. I'll make sure I'm zoomed in somewhere else so you can see that. The rest of the cake is in this little bag. That's it. So this is one of mine. Mermaid Days in fingering weight. I'm not really one for project bags. I have a couple, but I really very rarely buy them. This is basically it. Oh, one thing I will show you. I went away to Glasgow. I didn't take too much with me, but I realized that because I had moved everything into this pouch, I had forgotten stitch markers and I needed two stitch markers to tell me where I needed to decrease for the gusset. So being the resourceful person that I am, I decided I would use my earrings. So these are accessorized earrings. They're very lovely to wear, I love them very much. And they work wonderfully as stitch markers. So there you go. As far as finished objects go, I didn't really know where to start. I 
think this will be a more full section when the podcast has been running more than the first episode. So I've decided on two. I have one that I've just finished and I have one that I finished last. So the project I finished before this one, of which I'll talk to you a bit after. But this is my first finished object to show you. This is my Reina shawl. Now, again, I will try and show you this a bit better than just holding it up because I'm failing at the moment. And this is it here. Pull it apart a little so you can see. There we are. Now this has not been blocked and the ends have not been woven in as you can see. Um, but I still count it as being finished. For me the joy is in the knitting and once you've finished knitting and once you've cast it off, in my mind it's finished. So on my Ravelry project page I have this marked down as being finished even though it's technically not. I'll probably get around to doing some of this tonight. I think I'm going to do it in bits so that I don't get fatigued from just weaving in all of these ends. But I'm really happy with it. It's really, really lovely. And as far as shawls go, it was a really simple pattern to follow. I could sit and have conversations and I could chat. I didn't have to concentrate on it absolutely fully all of the time. I cast this on on Christmas Day. So this was my Christmas cast on, using a lovely mini set that's made by Pixie Yarn. They're a hand dyer, um, you can find them on Etsy, I'll link to them somewhere up here. But my sister got me the set, which was a really lovely surprise, I wasn't expecting to get yarn from her. She's she's not a knitter, it was really really lovely to get that from her. And the colours, the colours are just gorgeous. I have added in this one here, this purple. Um, this is also pixie yarn, but it is from a sock set that I bought from, bought from her. The minis are just that burgundy, the pink. There's two speckled pale skeins and then this gold. I think it was the gingerbread tango mini set that she released for Christmas. I don't know if that's available anymore. And because this was quite an easy pattern to follow, I used this to do a fade for the first time. I know that fading generally works better with speckled yarn, um, so it's been really effective in this section here. You can see the difference in the speckles and the colours that have been used there, but you can't necessarily tell that there's two different minis. Whereas, I think between the pink and the purple, you can notice that significantly more. But I'd never done a fade before, I wanted to give it a go, so I thought having lots of minis is the perfect time to try that out because then you can melt them together a bit more efficiently. However, I did leave the gold just as a solid block. I didn't fade that in because I thought that would make such a really gorgeous border for the whole thing. It would really stand out. So that's not been faded, but I have tried to fade the rest. I don't know how well you can see that. I hope you can because it, it's really beautiful. And that purple in the middle has slotted in really quite nicely. My reason for adding that in was when I decided to fade, I knew that the burgundy and the pink wouldn't necessarily melt together in the best way. They're very different, so I wanted a kind of mid-tone and I thought that did the job quite nicely. And I like that it was also pixie yarn, so the whole thing has been dyed by her. Now, for transparency's sake, I made a bit of a boo-boo with this. We were watching I think we were watching Mulan, we were watching Mulan and obviously I got too wrapped up in the film and during this lace panel I dropped a stitch and I didn't notice and I didn't notice for several rows until it had fallen down quite significantly. So I panicked because I'm still not completely confident with fixing mistakes so as soon as I saw it I knew I was going to be in trouble. So I grabbed it thankfully, I managed to find it but I fixed it a bit too hastily and this is the result I'll show you here this is the result so it's just here it's not the end of the world especially as it's in the lace section that blends in a little bit better than it might normally but it is a bit annoying but I would rather that than dropping stitches and having to you know frog a project or start over again I'm fine with it, I think it's okay. And there was someone on Instagram who said it looked like, was it cobweb lace? Cobweb stitch? 
If you know what that is, please let me know, because if there's a way to do this on purpose, I would be interested in learning it. This was completely by accident and just a way of saving all of my stitches, but I love it. I think this is really nice. I'm gonna get it blocked and weave the ends in. I think the lace is going to really pop. So yes, this is my Reina in all of its faded, hang on, aha, all of its faded glory. But I only have one other finished object to talk to you about, and unfortunately I can only talk to you about it. It was a pair of socks that I made for my friend for Christmas. They were really simple. Oh, they were really simple to make. I used a pattern from this book by Lynn Rowe and Betts and Corkhill called Knit Yourself Calm that I got from my mother-in-law for Christmas one year. It's fantastic, but there's a sock, basic sock pattern in here, and that's what I used to make these. I used one of my sock sets. It's the My Printer Broke sock set, and the main skein is called My Printer Broke. The mini is called Lover. This is the yarn here. This is Printer Broke. The cake is really messy, and this is actually the same cake that I used making the socks. So this is what I have left over from making a pair of socks. Try and show it up. This is what I have left. So it's quite substantial. I reckon I could probably get at least another pair of short socks out of that, um, if not another full length pair, especially if I was using another mini, I think that would work really well. But it, I love this colorway so much. It's just, it's so much fun. It's so bright and cheerful and it just makes me happy, especially during the winter months. And they turned out so nice. They're so fun. I absolutely love working them and I hope she likes them. If you're watching this, Sam, you shouldn't be because it's it's way too cringy, but I hope you like your socks. And here we are. That is the podcast. I really hope that you've had a good time. I'm really hoping that it gets easier to do this and I feel a little bit nervous as time goes on. If you've got any questions at all about anything that you've seen, either get in touch with me. I've got Instagram, I have a Facebook page. But there's also Ravelry. I've opened up a group there and I would love it if you would join us over there and get involved in the chats, show off your stash busting projects for the Kelpie Cal 2020. I would love to have as many people joining in with that as possible. It'll make me feel better about busting my stash. In a minute I'm gonna talk a bit about some shop news and um, some information about Kelpie Knits yarn. If you're not interested in that, feel free to click away, that's fine, that's why I saved it till the end. Before you go, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be absolutely phenomenal. It would be lovely to have people coming back and to start getting chats going about projects and chats about knitting, crochet and what makes us happy. A lot of the people that I've met who are part of the knitting community and the making community online are amazing and I would love to add to that and keep that going and build a really lovely little space on YouTube where we can all chat and hang out. So please subscribe if, if you've enjoyed this. Like the video, it does make a difference. I never really thought that it did, but apparently, yes it does. So if you could just thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, it'd be lovely to have you coming back and it would be lovely to have you here. Yarn content is about to follow. If you're not interested in that, it's been lovely, lovely having you and chatting to you and getting to warble at you. So thank you and I will see you in two weeks. Yarn information. Like I said, my business is Kelpie Knits and I dye my own yarn. The shop is going to be open on the 18th for orders. I run a dye to order system. The shop is open on the 18th. You can order as much of whatever colourway you like. It will be dyed to order and then get shipped out to you the following week. Now, orders for the yarn club, I think by the time this goes up, will have just closed for February. If you haven't ordered your yarn club by the time this goes up, you've missed out on February, but you can still get March and all the other months after that. If you head over to the website, that's available all the time. The yarn club is open whenever you can get your subscription to that. I think that's all the news as far as the shop is concerned. I'm at kelpienets.com, so even if you just want to have a browse, head over there see what I'm about and what I have and I hope you love it as much as I do because I love the business and I love getting to work with yarn. And that's it for this fortnight. I will be back in two weeks. I don't know what the date for that is off the top of my head. I might have it on the screen here somewhere. Uh, that's when I'll be back. This is a fortnightly podcast so don't expect a weekly episode. Please join in with the Kelpie Callum over on Ravelry. It would be lovely to have you and to have your support for the stash busting journey, this no spend journey. That I'm on for this year. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.